Good morning, guys. This is Andre, your certified tour guide in Minsk, Belarus, and if need be, your real estate concierge here on the ground. Today, we're going into the villages again to see the houses. But before the scouting for the houses start here on the ground, which is a demanding and pretty um, uh, tedious process, expensive too, uh, what happens? How do you shortlist the houses? Many people uh, get to me with the ads from the websites, which are not really local websites, and yet they are out of date where to search for a house and how stay with us we're here in the village of cool in Stolpce district and the place uh, behind me sells for ten thousand. Uh, the agency is selling it so we're not trying to cut short this time but uh, we clearly realize that the place here for ten thousand is not really ten thousand it's more than an hour drive to minsk there are no shuttle buses from here to Minsk. Uh, the place has electricity, well water, everything's cool, location is sweet, birds are humming. But data isn't that good and gas uh, and uh, telephone are to be subscribed to, which requires a couple more thousand dollars. As always, the foundation is ancient, uh, rocks with uh, clay between them, so it's not super reliable, won't last another hundred years. But generally it's an okay house to move in and to live in it's not just for you know paperwork but uh, summer house for an escape from the city so this is about uh, this is about checking the place on the ground i'm ashamed to say the trend for the foreigners to shop for housing in belarus is only picking up so the uh, leading real estate websites are not providing listings in english yet you'd have to battle with google translate or with some friend, local person assisting you through the Russian language search. Suppose you are searching for a house in Stolpce district, the, uh, my district, one hour away from Minsk with reasonable uh, housing prices, like that one behind me, about uh, nine, $8,000. You may choose Realt, Onliner, Kufar, Domavita. They're the leading websites for that and fiddle with the parameters to get uh, either map search results or listings uh, on your screen and choose respectively from what you see in the pictures what you assume from the map and it's uh, very essential to run the whole check um, five or six factors uh, before you even go to see the property maybe even call the owners ask about the paperwork if it's ready or not and uh, conclude based on that once you are done uh, short listing through these websites, uh, you have to go and see it on the ground because there's a lot of things that, that you discover, especially when the snow is gone, on the ground. Talk to people, ask questions, blah, blah, blah. It's easy in, 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 a, in, a, in an apartment block because everybody knows everybody, but in the village, it requires some long-term research. So on a short notice, your results may not be as good as uh, after three or four rides down here. One of my clients recently uh, asked me if um, I was charging reasonable money to drive around these places and uh, see the houses, potential TRP and living uh, housing options. To which I said that basically it covers wear and tear, uh, not just from this ride, but also from previous rides, which uh, it's uh, necessary to take to see the place. Maybe a couple discussions with the owners, like one month apart, and people become really generous if the place doesn't sell in a month or two. And it perfectly justifies the price, which is uh, twice as little than the agency would charge you. So technically I'm providing translation services uh, rather than, you know, real estate agency services. And I think the figure is justified. You pay for the outcomes and I deliver the outcomes. That's why I'm here. Now, guys, we are in a village with a fancy name, Kul. It's an interesting place. We are here already a second time. We have already had discussion with the agent and it helps a lot to see where the budget is going. And uh, on top of the village fancy name, uh, I would say there are several wrinkles about the price, about uh, the location. It's nice, cool, scenic and all, but the house doesn't have uh, a gas or phone line they are somewhere nearby and it costs a few pennies to get the subscription uh, quite a few pennies by the way and it's one of the haggling points and here you have to find a balance between the, the necessity of getting the house here and now for your uh, one year visa for your further rebuilding it into something more serious and the owner's emotional attachment to the place and you'd have to go through this dialogue with the agent or get the owner involved directly and near the deal depends of course on how long they've been selling it and how long they haven't had much success and how much the agent is tired of rolling back and forth from minsk down here and back 
110 kilometers basically yeah, sorry uh, 71 kilometers to open up the house and tell the story and hear again that it's not really ten thousand dollars kind of story let's see how it works out